The Basilica of St. John the Baptist is situated on the highest point of the ridge surrounded by the city of St. John's. The stone for the cathedral was brought from Kelly's Island in Conception Bay, and the building was completed in 1850. Today, it is still one of the finest examples of Romanesque architecture in North America. The interior of the basilica is equally impressive. From floor to ceiling, there abounds a wealth of breathtaking decoration. Situated under the main altar is the magnificent statue by Hogan, Redeemer in Death. Locally, we call it the Dead Christ. The only other like it is in Ireland, the birthplace of so many of the stonemasons who built the cathedral. The St. John Arch and Statue were first erected in 1857, when the arch had a single span. Later, the arch was moved and rebuilt with a triple span. The clock is over seven feet in diameter and was once illuminated by gas jets. In front of the basilica, other examples of statues in stone stand watch over the cathedral square. The next building in the square is the Presentation Convent, and inside can be seen one of the most breathtaking works of art in the world. Each year, hundreds of visitors gaze in awe and admiration at the Veiled Virgin by Giovanni Strasso. The sculptor has given the illusion of looking through a veil, although the bust is delicately hewn from a solid block of marble. It has often been said of the Anglican Cathedral in St. John's that it is one of the finest examples of Gothic architecture to be seen either in Canada or the United States. It was designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott, whose son both designed much of the interior and supervised restoration after the fire of 1892. Thus, the exterior of the cathedral matches the inside in the intricacy of its pointed Gothic detail and its carvings. Typical of the style is the variety in the stonework. The original limestone came from England, used as ballast in westbound ships. But following the Great Fire, much of the mortar and stone was damaged, and repairs have carried on continuously ever since. You can imagine the ultimate beauty of the church by comparing the difference that restoration makes. The interior of the Anglican Cathedral is beautifully elaborate. The sculpture is perhaps the outstanding feature of the interior. No two carvings are the same, and we see just how true this is when we compare each arch, pillar, and piece of fine stonework. Magnificent stained glass windows typical of the work of their designers, Kemp and Jones, cast a soft golden green light. The cathedral abounds with works of art to delight the eye. There are some beautiful examples of statuary in the chancel area. Each block of stone in the altar was shipped from England for assembly. And uniquely the lectern is chiseled from solid oak in the form of an eagle. Gower Street United Church dates from 1856. 
It is a brick exterior, and its style is actually a mixture of Gothic and Romanesque. Assorted towers and turrets give it a structurally massive appearance. Inside, the church is as solid as a rock, displaying no hint that the once proud steeple has been removed. Behind the minister stands the choir galleries and a mighty pipe organ. Where the congregation sits, there are two semicircular galleries. One on a level with the pulpit, and the second near the apex of the ceiling. When the minister delivers his sermon, he does so directly at the congregation. Eye to eye, you might say.